Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Khan. I'm coming from London, uh, working at my draft solutions as a mobile software engineer. And I'm also a Google Developer Group London lead. So um, if you want to, uh, after, this quest, after this talk, especially if you have any more questions, uh, you can always find me on social media and ask me any questions. So I try to reply as much as I can. Um, first of all, thank you very much for uh, staying till now and uh, joining me here. So today I'm going to talk about Firebase, uh, databases in particular. Uh, first of all, how many of you know Firebase when it had this logo? Nope. Awesome. So yeah. So back then, uh, which was a few years ago, uh, Firebase was a database solution, a database tool, basically. And that was the only thing it was doing. Uh, then later, Google has acquired uh, Firebase and made it look much better, as in like visually. Uh, plus, uh, it converted that database solution into a something much more. So right now, Firebase is a, a platform for app developers where they can uh, build their applications then they can uh, monitor like well they can maintain those applications um, and then they can also monetize and uh, grow the applications as well so it's not just for mobile it also applies to web uh, yeah so it has solutions like again it has uh, more than 20 products in it and like most of these actually this keeps changing so it since basically there are actually a few more products in the Firebase catalog on top of this now um, so uh, today we are going to talk about two of these products uh, Fire, Firebase Cloud Firestore and real-time database so real-time database which is at the bottom here is the solution that again um, that Firebase was uh, while it had this logo and Cloud Firestore is something uh, Google started working on after acquiring Google Firebase so it is a new solution uh, by Google um, and today we are going to see basically the differences between these two solutions um, in general, f motto of Firebase is to provide um, developers uh, uh, great experiences. So it's not basically to make uh, the work uh, life of developers easy. This is the whole idea of the Firebase. Uh, it works on like most platforms, so I iOS, Android, Web, um, Unity. So if you are working on a game, you can still use Firebase database and C++. Uh, and the, all these products, Firebase products, are integrated with each other. So um, if you are using, so if you are using just one Firebase product, it's fine. But if you are using multiple products, then uh, the benefits starts increasing, uh, kind of par parabolically. So um, uh, so, for example, if I use Firebase Analytics and uh, Crashlytics at the same time, you can see uh, this combined data. So, when a crash happens, you can see the steps that led to that crash. So, it basically the each product makes the other one more powerful. And like I mentioned, today we are going to talk about two products. The left one is the real-time database, and the right one is the uh, Cloud Firestar. So let's start with real-time database. Um, like to simply explain, uh, real-time database is a cloud-hosted NoSQL database. Uh, it handles synchronization and conflict resolution automatically, uh, and 
it allows you to using the client libraries uh, dependencies, SDKs, however you call it. It allows you to directly interact with the um, the data from your app. Um, so first one is the synchronization. So like I said, it handles it automatically. So you don't need to worry about, for example, how many of you here are using um, Google, well, Google, Google Cloud Messaging or now it became Firebase Cloud Messaging? How many of you have used, yeah. So if you are using your own database solution or like in general, if you are maintaining your own backend, um, for example, let's say you have a messaging app, then um, when the data is updated, let's say someone sent a message to someone else, uh, then you need to notify that someone else that uh, they got a new message. And you need to do this, uh, like for example, again, in that case, using the cloud messaging service so that you send them a push notification to notify them that they got new message. But uh, real-time database handles this automatically. So uh, once uh, data changed, all clients that are subscribed to that data are getting notifi notified. Um, it handles offline uh, mode automatically. So if the user doesn't have uh, access to internet, at the moment they modified something. Um, so let's say they added uh, two new documents to something. Uh, and then as soon as they, they get online, this gets automatically synced up with the clou cloud. So this new data gets written. And uh, if there are new data on the cloud that user needs to get, they also get synced automatically. Uh, so let's say we have something like this. Uh, but, but first of all, how it looks like on the console. Uh, so it's pretty much a JSON object, well, the JSON file actually. So um, each of these objects are items and users are uh, JSON objects. And then again, you can use pretty much everything that you can use with JSONs. So, um, yeah, this is the idea in general. So again, let's say we have something like this. So we have list of users, and then user ID one is kind of my data here. So I have email address, favorites, um, and then again, ID, last seen, and name. Um, so on the Android side, how it works is that you have a database object, which is basically you just get uh, by doing Firebase real-time database dot get instance. So it's pretty much uh, again um, all the initialization is done via uh, Google Play Services Google Services plugin. So once you add it to the to your uh, to your project together with Google, Google services JSON you get from the Firebase console. It initializes automatically. Uh, and then all you need to do is basically to get this database reference. And then, then you can start accessing the data. So in this case, we want to uh, change a state. So let's say, yeah, so again, we have users. And then the user ID is, in this case, like user ID 1. So uh, we don't care where we get these values because it's not imp very important in this case. And then, um, so basically, in general, it goes as, as uh, the deeper you go, you use the child uh, method call. So like child of users is, the, is my particular user. And then uh, it has a child called favorites. So if you go here, for example, users, and then this is the child, and this is a child of this, and then uh, this is child of this. So in order to update any value here, uh, all you need to do is like go child, 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 and then uh, modify it as like true, false, whatever. Um, so until here, 
So on like child, as you go child, 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 except for the last line, it just creates a reference. It doesn't do anything actually. So it doesn't run a query. It doesn't do anything with internet. It just it creates a lazy reference. And once you call, in this case, set value, then it um, runs all these steps and um, kind of modifies the value at that moment. So let's check. Ah, so and then uh, as a callback here, you can get the result. So if it was a successful or not, uh, basically you can modify your uh, update your UI accordingly based on this. And then you can listen for the da uh, data as well. So in this case, we uh, listen for the changes for a particular user. So again, it could be just my user here. And then we listen for changes. So add value event listener. So again, be, until we add this event listener, nothing happens here. So once we add the listener, then we start getting updates. Um, and then uh, we have this own data change, uh, which, uh, which is a st snapshot object. Um, so data snapshot in general is um, the like the Firebase fire, well in this case uh, but yeah Firebase version of your data. So um, and then doing this get value and then passing a class here, you can convert that val uh, that snapshot into a Java or Kotlin object. Uh, or if you are on iOS, uh, so basically any platform, all platforms have this uh, kind of thing. Well, web doesn't because you can just uh, access JSON object directly. So yes, um, basically then uh, you have own cancel here as well. So you can handle if, I don't know, internet disappeared in the middle of uh, the process or something, you can handle that as well. Um, now the diff so this method uh, allows us to subscribe to changes. So uh, basically, once you call this method, uh, you will get updates uh, as long as you are in this uh, code block. Or so as long as, for example, your activity is uh, alive, you will keep getting updates automatically. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to get the data once and do something with it, then you can just add a listener for single value event. So in this case, you just get the, up, the value once and then stop listening. Uh, so now let's say we have this, uh, again, since it is a JSON-based database solution, I, I'm just modeling the objects with JSON. So let's say we have these uh, items. Then item A is the first item. Uh, then we have details, which has priority. And the content is uh, something. And then we have another item here, which has another the priority hundreds, for example. And then um, we can, again, we can get the items same way we did before. So this is um, listening for the changes uh, as long as the activity is alive. And then Firebase real-time database allows you to uh, order the data you are getting. So in this case, you can order the data by um, priority of the item. So, and this is basically a reference. So you go like put by putting slashes. So each of them is child of the previous one. So you just uh, give a reference to that priority variable in this case. So you can order things. Then you can limit the number of results to, in this case, like we limit it to 10. And then uh, this end at three is, so the kind of you can query, uh, like set a limit to the, um, to the priority in this case. So only like top three priority we get. But this is pretty much uh, the querying you, you can do using the real-time database. 
uh, you cannot like do anything more advanced than this. So on the other side, we have Cloud Firestore. Um, as like as you might have noticed, it's pretty much exact. Like so, this slide, uh, this part is exactly same as the real-time database. So Cloud Firestore does everything real-time database can do. And then on top of it, it does other things. So it adds the querying uh, feature. So you can uh, make better queries. And also it has a flexible data structure. So it's not a JSON uh, structure in this case. Um, so it, this way it allows um, like other things, which we will talk about in a second. So it looks like this. Uh, again, this is kind of, uh, in this case, for example, we have items. Uh, so it goes, the, in the previous version, it was like a child, 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 so it was no structure. In this case, it is. Uh, it starts with collection. So this items is a collection. And then each item here is, an ob uh, is a document of that collection. And then each document has uh, their fields, kind of like like a like a normal object. In this case, you can imagine. So if in this case, user, for example, like just like we had before. So you have uh, all these variables here, and then uh, and then you can have sub collections. So the important thing here is that uh, with real time database, once you query the user ID one user you get all this, plus you get all this at the same time, because this was just an array inside. But in this case, this is a sub-collection. So you, when you query, uh, queries are shallow by default, so you don't get uh, sub-collections automatically. So once you query with Firestore, you, all you get is this, basically. This one you don't get. You need to query this separately in order to get favorites. This allows Firestore to be faster. So um, you basically get uh, the, as small amount of data as possible at, like, at a time. And then how it works is, like I said, it was basically query uh, the collections. So it goes like collection, document, collection, document. Uh, this is the structure of Firestore. Uh, so the first one is again the name of the collection and then the name of the ID of the user and then favorites is the sub collection and then this particular item. So in this case we modify this item uh, using such structure basically. And then this let is a f uh, Kotlin thing. So what it does is basically it like so it runs this plus does that set so um, in case of real time database uh, we had this we had this um, list of things that we favorite we favorited uh, and they were just like um, item item one through item two through kind of thing so in this case what you can do is you can check the new state, and then you can say um, if it exists, then set it to the. Uh, sorry, if it exists, yeah. So the new state is a boolean, so which means I favorited this item. So I'm saying that if I favorited this item, then uh, set this to true, and if I deleted this item, so if I unfavorited, then just delete this item. So. Uh, this more flexible kind of, and then you add on success listener, and then you do whatever you need to do. You update the UI, uh, or on failure listener, so you can add like individual listeners, or you can do like real time database and add just uh, on on complete listener, and do this manually inside. And then. Uh, to listen to changes, uh, you do here like collection and then document again, and then you say get again. This doesn't do anything until you add a listener. 
uh, and then in the listener, basically you uh, get the results, and then if it exists, then do things like uh, th this is the, the Cloud Firestore way of converting the snapshot into a um, into a Kotlin object in this case, and then again. If snapshot doesn't exist, then it means it failed, so uh, do something with that, update the UI again. Uh, so this is the add snapshot listener. Um, yes, yeah, so this is getting the data once, sorry. So this is the getting the data once, and or you can add the snapshot listener, which uh, gets the real-time updates, so every time something changes, uh, you get updates with it. Um, so one good thing with this actually is that, again, if you have an app that you need real-time updates, uh, you just update your UI here. And then if you change something in the app, if you set some value to something, for example, if you fa favorited some item, right? You don't need to go and update the favorite icon to the uh, well, favorite one, for example, check mark or like heart with uh, field uh, inside. Uh, what happens is that you get, when you update something, you also get, uh, the this listener gets triggered again. So if you are updating your UI here, it will automatically get updated by itself. So you don't need to handle the UI manually. And then you can run transactions. So in this case, we have like, for example, a follower count uh, object, uh, sorry, variable for each user, and uh, like every time someone follows, we, we want to update follower count. The tricky thing here is that if so two, two people will follow same user at the same time, um, they will, for example, let's say we have 10 followers, they both will try to update it to 11, because their version is 10 followers, so they will just increase it by one and make it 11. Uh, and then if they will try to write this, uh, well, at the end, you while you should have uh, 12 followers, you will actually end up having 11 in the counter. So it will cause, at the end, uh, inconsistent data. Uh, so the idea of the transaction is that uh, you get the document here. Uh, so this is a reference again. So till here till this is a reference, and then you get the document, and then you update that using the reference. Um, using So basically, this user is coming from the Firestore. So what happens here is that when you run this transaction, Firestore checks the previous value, and then the new value you updated to. And then it knows that uh, you increase this number by one, so it can then handle that like uh, if someone else tries to do the same thing, it adds up rather than just overriding the previous value. Um, and then you can run queries. That's the, again, that's the good part. Uh, one of the like main benefits comparing to the real-time database. So uh, in this case, we, for example, want to get the users named Khan, and they have who has more than thousand followers. So you can do this, and then when once you say get, you get the result, and then you can order things. So you can say, for example, order by the follower count, uh, descending, and the last scene. So um, yeah, pretty much you can order by uh, any variable. And you can also do, this is something new, by the way, this, uh, you can query by uh, array variable, like array item. So you can say, like, uh, get me all the users that I am following, for example. So it would check uh, where array contains is the method name. And then you can say, like, followers and then uh, your user ID. And then... Uh, what you get at the end is um, users who has your user ID in their um, follower list, follower array. So that's something new recently added. 
And then you can do this limitation again here. So you can limit the numbers to 10. Uh, but here, one, there's one limitation. So where greater than is a inequality com comparison. So it's not very equal to, but very greater than. Um, then we use follower count. And then the, the trick is that the next order by uh, value that you use uh, it has to be the same as the last uh, kind of inequality comparison. So these two have to be uh, the same variable. It's a funny limitation, but well, it exists. Um, and another thing is that, let's first come here. Another thing that to keep in mind is that uh, in order to run queries on multiple uh, variables, like in this case, for example, we use name and follower count at the same time, you need to create indexes. So uh, this is a way to tell Firestore that you are going to run queries on multiple uh, variables. So that, because the whole idea of Firestore is to be fast, so it's, doesn't allow things that might slow you down. So in this case, by creating uh, by creating an index, you say uh, kind of you let Firestore prepare it for this query. So if you have a, a filter view, for example, with three queries, you should create uh, seven indexes for each combination of the query base. No, seven, ten actually, because if not, not. Seven, correct. So if it's just one, if you are using just this or just this, you don't need to create an index. But if you are using multiple, you need to create index for every combination. OK. And so you cannot do this on Firestore. So what, what, I, what we are trying to do here is that get every user that is using Gmail as an email provider. But you cannot use uh, this uh, kind of wildcard uh, thingy, asterisk, here, because Firestore doesn't allow uh, broad queries, kind of. Again, it's all about being fast. So it, you have to uh, query by an exact uh, value. So in this case, it will basically look for uh, an email address that is like asterisk at uh, gmail.com and it will it won't return anything at the end um, so again let's say we have such structure so we have a user's name and follower count and then the idea of indexing here uh, a bit more detail about indexing so we have user uh, name is a user and then user b is b user and then we have follower count 102 and 13. So by creating an index, we allow Firestore to create something like this. Not exactly. It's not literally what's happening, but this is the logic behind it. So you allow basically Firestore to create a new value, which <laughs> yeah. So which basically contains these two things appended to each other. So. Uh, then what Firestore does is basically sort by just this new, uh, sorry, not sort, query by this new, um, the new variable. That's the idea. And then, uh, yeah, well, this returns a list of uh, users, the whole all users. And then, um, yeah, and then. Um, this is another thing that is new with Firestore. Uh, you can run batch writes. So what it means is that uh, if you have a list of uh, changes that you want to make on the same database, uh, you can just create a batch, uh, multiple operations. And then, uh, yeah, so you, you can update basically all the values uh, separately, add them to batch. Uh, which can be, again, set, update, delete, so it doesn't need, have to be the same operation. And then at the end, you just commit this patch. 
and it, it again has an incomplete listener where you can check if it was successful or not. Um, again, this allows you to do things like, uh, for example, in this case, uh, you are adding a, so let's say you have a list of, like you have a screen where you can, al you allow user to change multiple things at once. Um, again, this allows you to do that easily. Uh, so you run them at all, all at once in parallel. So uh, it reduces kind of uh, number of queries you make, the less amount of internet usage. Good. So one thing, one comparison you should make uh, between obviously uh, these two solutions is how much, which one is cheaper or like, because this is a big factor uh, if you are using something, if you are deciding on a product that you want to use, this is a big uh, factor. Um, so the answer is that it depends. So neither of them is more expensive than the other. Uh, they just, the logic of their pricing is different. different. So with re real-time database, you have, um, so with real-time database, again, you get uh, pri like priced based on the size of your data. Uh, so because it's kind of a JSON file again, so m the more you um, store, the more you get uh, kind of built. While with Cloud Firestore, uh, you get priced by the operations you run. So uh, number of reads, number of writes, uh, so if you are basically, uh, if your product uh, has a logic where you need to update the data very often, then it's better to go with probably real-time database. Uh, but if you, like, if you set the values once and then like uh, maybe save the data and then like, try to avoid like number of reads and writes, reduce number of reads and writes, then the Cloud Firestore might be better. Um, obviously, it depends on the querying you might need. So if you want advanced queries, then you need to use Cloud Firestore. You have to. Um, and also, it in general depends, again, on the use case. So, so for example, real-time database slows down in time. This is very important thing. So as your data grows, uh, since it's a JSON object, uh, the amount of time each query takes increases. And also, um, for example, if you want to run an uh, advanced query on something, you have to get the whole JSON and then, uh, or a part of JSON. Basically, uh, once you get uh, an item, you get everything that is under it. So you cannot just uh, filter out stuff. That's why you have to get everything and then you have to filter out uh, everything by yourself. This means more data. So your app will use more data for no reason. It also means it will be slower because you get bigger data. So it will take some time and also you, will, you have to run uh, queries in your client code in order to display what you need. Um, while with Cloud Firestore, you can just uh, filter out everything on the, well, you can let Firestore filter out everything you don't need and just return you what you need. Uh, there is a website, well, on Firebase uh, website, there is a comparison for the, uh, these two solutions. So it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice page actually, so if you want to check later, uh, you can just visit this. And that's pretty much it, I have to say. Uh, so thank you very much.